Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment today. I'm gonna to talk about the trouble with 3D movies. Um, there's something deeply wrong with the way Hollywood and the engineers that do 3D stereoscopic movies do them. And it has to do with um, misunderstanding why we have um, three-dimensional binocular vision. So, um, what I'm, the, the short story of what I'm going to argue is that, look, once you understand why we have uh, forward-facing eyes, which is the only reason that we would have uh, 3D movies, is because rather than having a narrow field of binocular vision like your bunny rabbits might have, we have a huge wide um, uh, a space of, of binocular vision. And it's not primarily about 3D. And so if you're going to do movies that tap into this, then you should understand what that large binocular field, binocular means both eyes seeing in the same direction, is for. And they're misunderstanding that and therefore not getting the oomph that you would actually want by doing 3D movies. So let's back up. Now, the problem with even a starting point, one problem is that 3D movies aren't um, per se 3D movies. The, the real thing that they're doing is doing uh, binocular movies. They're showing one image to one eye and another image to the other eye. And of course, you can get stereoscopy. That's the particular sense of 3D that you get by virtue of each eye having a different view of the same thing from a slightly different position. And that stereoscopic is, is for relatively nearby things. It's very rich and um, feels uh, uh, you know strong. But we get much stronger senses of three-dimensional vision. Um, that often trump, and usually in experiments, if they will show you stereoscopic cues that it's one depth versus one of these many other kinds of cues, often stereoscopy loses to those other competing cues. So, you know, if you close one eye and you translate back and forth, you'll get tremendously rich three-dimensional vision that's um, uh, better than stereoscopy. Um, your eyes, the degree to which it f has to flex, even one eye all by itself has to flex to get into focus can tell you um, how far it is. Um, just the positions within your visual field relative to the horizon can tell you um, how far things are. In fact, if you've ever played video games like uh, Call of Duty or any of these first-person shooter games, you are might have both of your eyes open, right? But the screen is just one screen. You are getting a, a monocular, not a binocular, you're getting a monocular view of that world, and it's very you know, reasonably rich world that you're looking, even I used to play for 20 years ago, let's say, um, and it's much richer today. And it's always pretty fairly unambiguous, the distance to things, especially as you're moving around, right? Now, um, and so, and you're, it's, it's fairly unambiguous despite having only one eye. You're basically a cyclops when you're playing. Now, um, so three-dimensional vision comes via many different kinds of cues, stereoscopy being just one through the binoc that special binocular capability. But we have binocular vision for reasons that go well beyond, um, well beyond three -dimensional, the three-dimensional view of stereoscopy that it gives you. In fact, what I've argued in my earlier book, Vision Revolution, is that the reason animals have binocular vision at all, even the narrow, narrow binocular vision, so bunny rabbits have one eye here and one eye here roughly, and most birds and most animals have eyes on opposite sides of their head. The right eye sees the right half of the visual, the right hemisphere. The left eye sees the left hemisphere. And there's a small, you know, binocular field in front, and they can even swivel back a little bit and get a binocular field in back. So they get a full panoramic view. Now, some of us uh, animals have lost the whole panoramic view and have, a, instead of having a narrow binocular region where both eyes can see, it's really wide. So we have this huge binocular region up front. Now, whether it's narrow or wide, the reason that we evolved to have one eye on opposite sides of the head is that we need, it, it's a special trick, which I won't get into much as, as much here, but it allows you to have a grasper, namely your muzzle or your beak or whatever it is grasp in the world sitting here. And my right eye gets this perfect view of the right side and my left eye gets a perfect view of the left side, yet the beak or the muzzle blocks all this part of my visual field through this eye. But that's okay because this other eye sees it and vice versa. So you can get a, a God's eye view from both sides of the muzzle, your hand in some sense for most animals, and yet you can see beyond it, right? It gives you, if you just had one eye, then wherever you put your muzzle, that muzzle, you could get one, at, one view of it, but you'd be blocking everything behind. 
So having binocular vision, vision gives you that, whether it's a narrow field or a large field. What we large field animals have it for is a question. So I approached this question uh, 15 years ago, and uh, for a hundred years, it had been thought that binocular wide, um, that it's forward-facing eyes. Why do some animals have much more forward-facing eyes and some animals just have sideways-facing eyes? Um, what, what's the reason? And there's a, a, in, the, in the mainstream narrative for laymen, it's usually, oh, predators. Uh, it's all about predators. Um, and that doesn't explain it at all because uh, most, nearly all fish are predators and they have sideways facing eyes. Nearly all birds are predators, they have sideways facing eyes. Even amongst mammals, being a predator is not predictive of whether you have forward facing eyes or sideways facing eyes. In instead, what turns out to predict whether you have sideways facing or forward facing concerns um, uh, whether or not you live in forests and you're large. And so here was the hypothesis, that, that I, my hypothesis, which was just simply this. It was that um, we have forward-facing eyes because um, if you're big, uh, such that the distance between your eyes is big relative to the leafy clutter in the environment, um, then you can actually see through stuff. So when there's all of these occlusions out in front of you like leaves, then just like seeing through your own muscle we talked about, I, I have all these things in front of me, and yeah, I'm missing, to one eye, I'm missing half of what's beyond, but the other eye is seeing all that stuff. And so each eye is seeing a different view of what's beyond the clutter. And it's called probabilistic summation. And when you work out mathematically how much of your environment you can see up front in a cluttered, leafy environment, um, within your binocular field, you can not just see twice as much, but you can often see uh, maybe six times as much or, or 12 times as much, depending on how you kind of model it. And you're losing entirely what's behind you, but you're making up for it in the cluttered environment by the your ability to see through these layers of clutter. Right, so, and I'm not, I'm not, not gonna get into the details of that because I really wanna focus on the, the 3D movie side of it. So the reason that we have large visual fields rather than narrow visual fields is because um, it's those animals that were large and in forested environments. Animals outside of forested environments altogether, no matter whether they're small or large, have sideways facing eyes. For animals that are within forested kinds of environments, when they're small, sideways facing eyes, and the bigger that they get, the more they have more forward facing eyes. Because that's where the benefits of this X-ray power to see through stuff comes in. Now, what this tells you, that is, stereoscopy is also about short range stuff, but stereoscopy is about seeing the same thing from two different positions in space to get that kind of different kind of angle to make three dimensional uh, perspective, three dimensional uh, image of it. This turns it on its head. Really, the reason that we have large binocular fields where we can see with both eyes is because we evolved in forests where there's a lot of stuff in front of us and we're sitting in there like in a, in a bush and I'm being partially blinded by this, but that's okay because I can see through these cracks and, my, uh, and whatever is being blocked by this hand, the other, the other eye is seen and vice versa, right? It's, in fact, I used to play back to Call of Duty. I used to have be in a sniper league and we would just sit in these sort of fake faux bushes. Uh, and if you hold still, you could never see anything because um, it would, you know, half of your visual field, is, a whole bunch of your visual field is being blocked. Whereas in real life, if you're in a bush, you can actually see out quite well because of this X-ray ability that I'm talking about. So the reason that we have large forward-facing, large binocular fields or forward-facing eyes is because of being in a world where there's all these things close to us and we wanna be being able to see and interact with things that are close and yet still see beyond it, right? All of our lives are actually, much of our lives and our intimate lives and our lives moving around stuff is because there's things close to us and far and one eye is seeing completely different things than the other eye. It's not about both eyes seeing the same thing and getting a three-dimensional image. It's about each eye seeing different things. In fact, you might just imagine we're, we're like just talking like this and I'm like this and if I'm close enough to you, I sometimes, my one eye will see some part of your head and my left eye we'll see completely a different part of your head. You know, like a really up close and personal conversations, so you're not getting stereoscopic visions at all. You're just getting just completely different stuff. But that's okay, your brain knows how to make sense of that kind of stuff. Where you want to, to use and harness 3D movies, and this is another problem. 3D movies are not 3D movies. 
3D movies are referring that we've used uh, as it's become just a term of art refers to putting on some kinds of glasses that allow different inputs to each eye. And of course you can use those to create stereoscopic movies where you have better 3D, but you can also use them to prevent pr to present images so that they're different in each eye. So that, and that's where, again, it, we evolved to have our forward facing eyes. So what you can do is you can make it much more interactive. You can have the person going through brush, going through tight places, being intimate with another person where there's lots of stuff in between and one eye is seeing different stuff. You know, it's not like you have to plan it, but the idea is use, do your video making, your 3D, you know, your, your, your binocular camera and put that binocular camera in the kinds of situations where we evolved to have forward facing eyes. These are in the places where you're up close and personal with occlusions, with things right in your face, and you're moving past it, getting right there in your face. That's what it's about. And then you're seeing that one eye is being covered and it's, it's getting uh, uh, blurry or whatever, and then the other one is, and you're only one eye is seeing anything at any given time or they're seeing different things. Allow movies to get up close and personal with the kinds of occlusions. It lets people interact, be in, the midst of it. When you're in the midst of a scene, rather than just far away from the outside watching, when you're in it, in the habitat, in that particular environment, that's when you get these different views from each eye. It's because you're down and dirty within the whole, uh, within that habitat. And eyes are being blocked some of the time and the other eyes being blocked some other parts of the time. That's just the normal thing. So allowing movies to get up close and intimate allow the filmmaking to get up close and intimate and harness the reason that we have large binocular fields in the first place, rather than mistakenly focusing just on the three dimensionality of it, which is the one of the weakest or the weakest three dimensional cue that we have. So they just focus entirely on just look at, make it look stereo 3D ish, you know, that's, and they even do this, they could be in an airplane flying by and there's the Statue of Liberty. They'll make the Statue of Liberty look stereoscopically 3D. You know, they'll mimic it as if you have a binocular camera out there that might be, let's say, 100 yards one eye and another, the other eye is 100 yards away in order to make, you know, the Statue of Liberty look 3D, which all of that it does is it just makes the Statue of Liberty look like a toy because Stereoscopy, when you do see three-dimensional things, it's almost always, it's always up close. It tells you something about how close it is. So it just completely ruins the effect. Gigantic statues aren't seen in 3D via stereoscopy. And that's just, that's just they've become completely unidimensional in their use of binocular vision and their understanding of binocular vision and are thereby ruining uh, the potential for binocular movies, they're not just 3D movies, they're binocular movies. And uh, if we've got anybody that is a filmmaker, I would love to talk to you more. Uh, if you're interested in these kinds of things, you can take a look at my earlier book, Vision Revolution, a bestseller, talks about this and other discoveries of mine in the vision domain. And um, that was your science moment.